Good morning. Uh, as I take from my brother Abdijem, I will also continue talking about uh, energy in relation to water and uh, peace building. So my name is Yared Asfaw. I am from Ethiopia. I'm also an international development policy program uh, graduate student at Duke. So in the following couple of minutes, I'm going to take you back to uh, Africa, uh, to the mother continent Africa, to three, three countries, uh, uh, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan, and talk about uh, one mega project by Ethiopia uh, called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, and see whether this dam is uh, really, uh, whether this dam is a source of conflict or cooperation in the, in, in the region. So uh, in the region, we will, uh, I will going to uh, talk about the three countries, Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt, uh, about the challenges and opportunities they are facing in relation to the shared water resource, the Nile River. Shared water resources are increasingly becoming a challenge uh, nowadays uh, in this uh, nowadays in the world. So this is also the case in the three countries: Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan. This Nile River is a transboundary river that crosses uh, 11 countries, including Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan. So uh, this river has uh, two major tributaries that originate uh, uh, from Lake Victoria, Quiet Nile. The other one is the Blue Nile uh, that originates from Ethiopia, uh, Lake Tana. And these two rivers meet to form the Nile River uh, by meeting at Khartoum, Sudan. So in reference to, uh, the, in reference to the uh, flow of the Blue Nile, Ethiopia is an upstream country, and Sudan and Egypt are uh, downstream countries. So these two tributaries are the major tributaries that make up the Nile. Uh, when we see uh, the contribution of these two tributaries, uh, the Blue Nile contributes 59% of uh, the flow to the main Nile. Uh, of course, 85% of uh, the water that makes up the Nile comes from Ethiopia uh, through, the other two through other two rivers. But the Blue Nile is the one which contributes the majority percentage of uh, contribution to the main Nile. The remaining 50% comes from uh, 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 quiet Nile, originated from Lake Victoria. So this river became a, a source of conflict for the three countries when Ethiopia announced the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam in 2011. So this dam is uh, uh, still under construction. Uh, as of now, it has reached 90% completion. And when it is completed, it has uh, a total of water holding capacity of 74 billion cubic meter. And as of now, uh, it has captured 17 billion, billion cubic meters uh, through three rounds of water filling. So this river became a source of conflict for these countries because the countries have uh, competing interests on this, uh, this Nile River. Uh, Egypt and Sudan, the two downstream countries, use the Nile uh, River water uh, for uh, meeting their water demand for consumption, irrigation, and uh, electric generation. Whereas Ethiopia wants to uh, use the Nile River, the Blue Nile River, which is one of the major tributary of the Nile River, for generating electricity. And for that, uh, it announced the construction of the dam in 2011. Following this announcement, the downstream countries, Egypt and uh, Sudan, uh, raised their concerns on uh, the, the threats of this dam to their water security. And these three countries uh, entered into bilateral and multilateral negotiations at different levels. Uh, however, these negotiations have continued for a decade uh, and uh, still it is ongoing without reaching any mutual beneficial agreement. So my, my, uh, as a Rotary Peace Fellow and as an international uh, development policy student, I, I would like to uh, answer uh, uh, whether this dam is really a, a source of conflict or is it an, an opportunity for these countries to cooperate. So in order to address this question, uh, I looked at three uh, things. One, the underlying cause of the disagreement among these three countries. And the other, uh, the, the, post, the possible policy options that can be considered to bring these three countries to cooperate so that they can utilize the resource uh, in equitable and uh, reasonable uh, manner. 
And lastly, what can we do uh, about this? So uh, when we uh, come to the cause of the disagreement, uh, the, the first uh, underlying cause of the disagreement among these three countries is the increasing water demand in the region, particularly in the downstream countries, Egypt and Sudan. Where the, this is attributed by population growth, climate change, and poverty. When we see the population growth, the population growth of the three countries combined showed that an increasing trend over time. And this population growth means that uh, it has increased the uh, demand for water in the region by increasing the demand for uh, food, energy, and uh, drinking water. The other contributing factor is poverty. Uh, uh, in 2015, World Bank uh, report showed that half of the world's poor people live in only five countries around the world. And among these five countries, Ethiopia is uh, one of the, uh, the five countries ranked number four. So this uh, poverty, uh, one of the, uh, the, the main reason for the high poverty in the country is the limited access to electricity. So when we see the access to electricity of these three countries, Ethiopia has the lowest access to electricity among uh, these three countries. Uh, more than 55% of the population in Ethiopia do not have access to electricity. Uh, you, can, you may think of when you think of uh, lack of access to electricity, uh, limited uh, development, uh, limited access to uh, public services, including drinking water, uh, job opportunities, and so on. But uh, when there is, because of this lack of access to electricity, our mothers, sisters, and children are also suffering from traveling long distance for fuel collection, uh, uh, studying uh, using kerosene lamps, uh, as well as health problems because of uh, using traditional cooking practices, and also gender-based violence is also a problem. Overall, the lack of access to electricity limits uh, development as, and thus improved standard of living in the country. So for this reason, access to electricity in the country is a priority uh, national development uh, uh, agenda for the country, uh, Ethiopia. The other underlying cause of the disagreement is the downstream country's interest to control over the uh, Nile resource. Uh, uh, and the two downstream countries, uh, Egypt and Sudan, refer the colonial era agreements which is signed between the two countries in 1929 and in 1959 uh, uh, to be legally binding for other Nile Basin countries. Uh, the, the remaining uh, 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 nine countries, including Ethiopia. So when we see the, this agreement, it divided the total Nile water, which is estimated to be 84 billion cubic meter uh, annual flow between the two countries, uh, Egypt and Sudan, uh, living, living uh, li uh, without uh, sharing any uh, for uh, the other uh, Nile Basin countries, including Ethiopia. Whereas assigning uh, or considering the evaporation laws uh, at uh, Aswan High Dam in Egypt. So these causes uh, have resulted in preventing these three countries uh, from reaching a mutual beneficial agreement on three major uh, things. One is water filling duration of the dam. The second one is mode of operation of the dam, particularly in the event of uh, prolonged drought. And the third one is uh, legally binding nature of uh, the agreement, particularly in reference to future water use and development in the upstream country. So what measure can we uh, can be considered to address these underlying causes uh, of the disagreement? So uh, uh, sustainable development and uh, lasting peace can only be ensured, uh, especially in the context of shared water resources through regional cooperation. On the basis of this, the possible policy options are one, downstream countries, Egypt and Sudan, need to show their commitment and political will uh, to sign the cooperative framework agreement. Cooperative Framework Agreement is the agreement developed by the Nile Basin countries, including Egypt and Sudan, uh, but at the end, they refrain to sign from this agreement. So this agreement helps us to work together uh, in, uh, based on the principles of equitable and reasonable utilization of the uh, water resource. The second one is the three countries need to establish a robust data and information exchange mechanism so that they can uh, exchange data and information on the operation of the dam and other uh, data that help to ensure the safety of those infrastructures in the three countries. 
And these three countries need to work together to combat uh, their common threat, climate change, so that they can ensure sustainable access to these water resources. And for this, they have to uh, develop a comprehensive uh, drought contingency plan that can be uh, triggered during the events of extreme, drought, extreme uh, weather events uh, such as drought. And they need also to jointly plan and implement uh, regional water resource development uh, programs. And finally, they need to uh, actively engage or increase their engagement in uh, uh, regional economic integration. So as an international community, as a Rotary Peace Fellow and as a Rotarian, what can we do to support this process? One, continue to support the negotiation process and regional development cooperation initiatives based on the principles of equitable and reasonable utilization of these water resources. The second one is increase the public awareness uh, on the benefits of cooperation. And finally, uh, support regional level or basin-wide water resource development programs and projects. And I see my role as uh, uh, making uh, the three countries population, uh, uh, increasing the awareness of the three countries population to, uh, on the benefits of cooperation so that their governments will have the support back at home to make a, a justifiable compromise on the negotiation table. So that, uh, by, by, that means, uh, at the end, uh, promoting cooperation among themselves. So finally, uh, I found this dam uh, is a kind of uh, an opportunity for cooperation among these three countries, even though it is assumed that uh, this dam uh, beca is uh, becoming a source of conflict. Uh, we must engineer cooperation between upstream and downstream countries so that uh, we can ensure uh, reasonable and uh, equitable to the utilization of the water resource as well as ensure lasting peace in the, in the region for the, the present and future generations. Thank you very much.